In a previous video, we talked a little bit about technical debt. SonarCube is a tool that we can run on our applications to get a gauge of what our technical debt looks like. And technical debt can generally be categorized into one of these seven categories that you see here, which we'll go through. The one we're going to focus on in this video is lack of unit tests. But quickly, a few words on the others. Bugs and potential bugs. These are things like uncaught exceptions or empty catch blocks or potential exceptions, uh, anything that could potentially be an issue, uh, null checks or lack of null checks, things like that. Coding standards breach is when a developer does not adhere to well-known or organizationally documented coding standards. For example, there might be a way to name database columns in a database to which everybody in a company agrees. The nice thing about that is if a database gets very large, you can kind of predict what table names and column names will be. But if one developer maybe doesn't use underscores like everybody else or uses lowercase or uses a different set of abbreviations, that adds cost and complexity to every developer on the project. Duplications. This is also known as do not repeat yourself. So uh, duplications means you're doing copy and paste instead of making code modular. And SonarCube can check for this by essentially looking at the number of duplicated tokens within a block, and it can get a feel on is your program object oriented or is there a lot of copy paste going on. Lack of unit tests is the one we're going to cover now. Uh, bad distribution of complexity. If you're using a lot of if tests, ask yourself if you're really writing an object-oriented program. That's what I think of with bad distribution of complexity. And then spaghetti design is at a, at a higher level where you're looking at the design of an entire application and you're seeing, do we have the right things in the right areas or is there duplication? Is there, uh, are there two places to get information and are those two different places always accurate? That's what we're looking with, at with spaghetti design. Not enough for too many comments. Uh, that one's kind of self-explanatory, but it's an interesting one. Uh, many times, especially in Java, we recommend putting Javadoc above every class and every public method. Inline comments were not very... Uh, we, we tend to shy away from those because typically code should be readable. In other words, don't use single letter variable names. Use variable names that describe what the variable holds. If you do that, your code is more readable and requires fewer comments. Of course, on the flip side, if you write code without commenting at all, then it makes it very hard for another developer to understand what you're doing. So we do want to have that minimum Javadoc coverage. Keep in mind, you might also be that other developer. There's the concept of the present you and the future you, and sometimes you do things in the present as a gift to the future you. So nonetheless, there's a kind of Goldilocks that we need for comments. Let's take a look at lack of unit tests. For unit tests, uh, SonarCube frequently recommends uh, 80 to 100% coverage to get essentially an A grade. It's hard to get 100% because you have things like DTOs, which might be difficult to test, uh, but you really shouldn't go lower than 80% either. Now, one question might be, how do we know what our unit test coverage is? And up, up till pre, uh, recent versions of Eclipse, you had to install an add-in to look at test coverage. I'd frequently use one called Echolemma. A nice thing though, I'm not sure if this is Echolemma or not, but there is one now that is built into Eclipse, and this is Eclipse Photon, the one that I'm currently using. And for that, what we can do is we can right-click on our test and choose Coverage As and then JUnit Test. What this will do is it will run the test, and then it will tell us what our code coverage metrics are. This is very similar to what SonarCube can do for us, a bit more on SonarCube in just a moment. But nonetheless, you see in my tiny project, I currently have 50.7% coverage, so I'm a bit under where I need to be coverage-wise. Nice thing is this will help us out a little bit, and we can, we can drill down and we can see where we do and do not have coverage. You see up at the com.plant places, we have very little coverage. On the DTO layer, we have a lot better coverage, and on the service layer, much better coverage. Let's drill down to the DTO layer, and I'll click on one of our DTOs, and what you'll see here, lines that are highlighted in green mean they are called as part of a unit test. Lines that are highlighted in uh, the kind of pink-red color means they're not covered as part of a unit test. Now look at something very interesting here. Do you see we have some yellow? So if objects is instance of specimen DTO, then it does a little work here. Yellow means we have an if test with partial coverage. And you see things kind of go hand in hand here. 
because we know that if tests are oftentimes an indication of bad distribution of complexity. And so if tests make unit tests harder to write and also can increase our technical debt if not used properly. There's sometimes when you have to use an if test, but if you're using them excessively, you might have bad distribution of complexity. And your unit test code coverage will actually give you a little hint about that. As one of my colleagues says, a unit test is essentially a code review of yourself. You're looking at your own design to determine, have I done this well? Now back to Eclipse. The DTOs are fairly easy to test. It's the uh, things that are doing work like our specimen that is a bit more difficult to test just because we have more logic there. So here in, um, uh, sorry, in our service layer, and so this is specimen service stub. This is a stub class that we wrote just to kind of prove out a concept. You can take a look here and you can see where we have coverage and where we do not have coverage. Now take a look at this one. You see if search term contains edbud or search term contains sursis. You see that one is lit up in yellow, so that indicates that only one, only part of this if test is covered. Let's take a look at the test that we wrote for this. And it looks like we have uh, plants, a uh, specimen service, fetch plants, eastern redbud. If I added another test that covered Circus canadensis, then our line in our specimen service would go from yellow to green. That'll be fair, fairly straightforward to do. I can simply borrow another test, uh, fetch plants, and we'll say validate results for Circus. We can reuse the given users logged into my plant diary. We'll say uh, when user searches for Circus, then my plant diary returns Eastern Redbud. So you see a couple of a couple of items I need to make here, and I'll just use the little helper here to say, okay, go ahead and create this method. Uh, normally, Control One will work for this as well, whichever you prefer. So uh, when you whoops. A little fix here it should be when the user searches for Circus. There we go. Whoop, switch. Sorry, sometimes shortcuts get me in trouble. It's trying to change it to a different method. So we will be a bit more careful this time and we will uh, choose create method. Okay, when user searches for Circus, we can borrow from a test that we created earlier. So we'll copy plants equals specimen service, just like so. And then, then my plant diary returns Eastern Redbud. So for this one, we can simply iterate over this collection of plants here. So we'll say F-O-R-E and for each. And it figures out that uh, plants is a variable in scope that we can iterate over. So plant DTO plants equals new plants. We could, we'll have to make a little bit of magic here. We'll say uh, Boolean uh, redbud found equals true and then assert true, and I just realized I did that wrong, assert true, red bud found. Let's assume that we have not found it first. So let's, let's change this to false. Okay, and also fix my spelling on assert. And then we'll simply say if plant DTO dot get common contains, and we'll say uh, contains, and we'll say Eastern Redbud. That will make our test criteria. Uh, if plant DTO, get common, contains Eastern Redbud, then we'll say Redbud found equals true. Now you might be screaming at the video right now because I realized I just made a mistake. Uh, when user searches for Circus, I should search for Circus, not Eastern Redbud because Circus is the genus for Eastern Redbud. So, uh, but more importantly, it, it should really match what the method says it's doing. So with that fixed now, let's go ahead and do our coverage again and see what we get. So right click coverage as and JUnit test. Now the numbers did not budge much, uh, a little bit, but not much. But what I really want to point out here is take a look at the if test that used to be yellow. And here we go, it's specimen service stub. And this is the test right here, line 46. It used to be yellow because we weren't considering all cases. But you see, we've now adjusted our unit test to account for both the user searching for Eastern Redbud and the user searching for 
uh, Circus Canadensis, so or can, uh, Circus rather. So here's where we're calling it for Redbud, and of course we just wrote the one for uh, Circus as well. So now we cut. We've covered every single out, uh, possible outcome of that if test, and that's how if tests can get a little bit tricky, is because you have to cover all these different outcomes, and if you're nesting and nesting and making more and more complicated if tests, those number of tests that you have to write quickly become exponential. So that's a look at how we do code coverage in Eclipse. And uh, I will mention that Eclipse is separate from SonarCube. I just like SonarCube because the way it lays out these seven deadly sins. Now SonarCube can also compute unit test code coverage along with providing a metric for these other deadly sins. That's a whole other video for a different time. But the nice thing about SonarCube is it makes a nice dashboard. And also it gives you a, a pick list of where to go, where to fix the highest priority issues. When you're doing a code review, it's important to consider all of these seven deadly sins. Put that at the top of your code review list. SonarCube does not take much to set up. It only took me about five minutes to get it up and running. So it's a good thing to think about when doing a code review because it might give you inspiration on a place to start making suggestions. Unit test coverage being one, you see there are several others here, and you can certainly spend a lot of time in the bugs and potential bugs section. So I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.